What's up guys, this is Luke, and today we're going to be doing programming, however not actually uh, ourselves. Today on the forum was re released a program called the VEX Autonomous Planner. Now I have seen a video of this actually be before the release, and ever since I saw that video I have been absolutely giddy to get my hands on this and try it out for myself. So anyways, I'm going to have a link down in the description to both the program itself and to this thread on the forum. So if we click on the link on the thread, that will take us to the program, which is another web page. So you're going to see some things up here, some different options, and up here specifically, configuration, keyframes, and code. In the, config, in the configuration, you're able to set up your robot in the keyframes, you're able to set up your autonomous run, and in the code, you are able to um, take the generated code and then you'll be able to put that into robot C. It does have to go into robot C because that's what this is built to uh, to work with. So let's first focus on setting up our robot. So I'm going to just set up a fictional robot real quick. Now uh, you can name, let's name our first one drives, and it can be the drive. You're going to want to click on the drive in order to uh, set up your drive. Let's make it a four motor drive, which is pretty standard this year, especially with people needing a lot of power on their lifts. So let's go to two and nine and three and eight there we go um, down here you can use encoders on your drive um, so let's see we want to put this into let's just say digital two um, and then we can then make our next component which will be our lift and we want to label that lift and let's make this a four motor lift. So we want to make it four, five, six, and port seven. So we're just going to then suppose we have an, a potentiometer on that. Now let's, let's, uh, let's build our intake. So just label that intake. Uh, let's do a two motor intake because that's awesome. There we have ports 1 and 10 for our two motor intake. And let's suppose that we also have a pneumatic claw. So you can also set that up there, and you would just put in whatever port you've plugged the uh, solenoid into. So we'll just assume that we um, plug that into digital 3 since we've already used digital 1 and digital 2. And we'll just call this claw. And then you could also, if you had multiple solenoids, you could also uh, put in multiple digital ports. So if you have multiple pistons, that you're controlling, you could do that. Let's just assume it's just a simple claw, though, um, just for simplicity's sake. So now that we have the robot all set up, let's go to keyframes. Now you're going to see the skyrise field, and um, over here you're going to see starting position. Now you're also going to notice that this over here is frame one, and it's highlighted. Now it's going to also this is this is how you're going to start when you start the uh, autonomous period. So it's going to show up with pneumatics, whether you want the claw on or claw off. It's going to show up with uh, what height you want the lift at. And at least I'm assuming it's what height you want your lift at. It's going to show um, what you want your position. So if you are going to set up your robot every time, say, uh, say you want it all the way to the front of the tile, you can set it up like this. It's whatever you're going to start at. So let's just let's just assume, though, for simplicity's sake, that you um, that you're just going to start dead center of the tile. You can also change your uh, your starting position, whether it's um, on the non-driver side red or whether you're on blue. No matter what, you can uh, you can do all that. Then you can also change your rotations if you want to be pointing the other way or whatever. We're just going to start basically as they have it for you, though. So here. You can, if you hit new frame, you're going to be able to then manipulate your robot during autonomous mode. So, or or programming skills, but um, here let's say we want to drive forwards, pick up this cube, and score it over there. That we'll just do something real simple. Let's say you want to drive forward uh, 18 inches. You can do that. Um, actually, let's just make that a little bit less. Let's say 14 inches. Um, then you can hit new frame then you're going to, and each frame is an individual action. So there's no multitasking as of now, uh, but with each frame it's a successive action. So let's then say um, that we want to 
intake. This is one of the things that I find a little bit annoying. Um, nothing big, but you just have to know about it ahead of time, otherwise it's a little bit difficult to figure out. You're actually going to go to action type time, target, intake, value is going to be your speed, so let's say 127 because why not intake it fast? And uh, let's just do it for, let's say 500 milliseconds. And this is in milliseconds here on the time. So, the new frame, uh, we want to make sure we go at this post straight so that it doesn't get, um, actually, who cares if it gets caught? <laughs> um, but just to show off all the functions, uh, we can then change the action from driving to turning on our new frame. And let's say we want to just turn 45 degrees, then we can select another new frame, drive. Let's drive 25 inches, uh, just a little bit more, 35 a little bit less 30 let's just do 30 that looks about right okay so um, then let's add another frame let's turn the drive and let's do that minus 135 then let's do a new frame and let's drive for 35 inches that's way too much 24 still too much 22 20 <laughs> Do I hear 22, 22? Um, anyways, uh, so we're going to drive right there. Let's do a new frame. And now we're going to, instead of drive, we're going to lift. So let's do the lift. And this is a completely arbitrary value. Um, let's just go up to 1,000. Let's assume that's, that's a good potentiometer number. So we're going to lift up to that. We're going to do PID, not time, because time is inaccurate. However, if you don't have sensors, time is... It time, you can still do a good deal with time. I've seen some pretty impressive, some pretty impressive autonomous runs on time. Um, anyways, so we're gonna lift up to one, but but sensors are more more accurate. So uh, let's lift up to a thousand. Then let's hit a new frame, and let's then do time since we want to be able to access our intake. And here we can um, then put on our value. Uh, minus 127 so that we're outtaking and we'll do that for a full second because we've got time and then um, new frame you if you're touching the cube it doesn't count so we want to make sure we back away so let's um, let's just back up six inches so then this is one of the things that I personally find really cool in this um, you can then hit what appears to be a play button and is a play button and then you will see this 18 by 18 inch scaled square, uh, and, the, and then you can see it's lifting, you will see that it will act out your autonomous run just as you figured it out. Now there are a few things that I don't know if it's already been thought through, and I just don't know about it, or if it's going to be something that's going to be a, an update soon, but if we go back to configuration, you're going to notice that on the drive, there's nothing here for any sort of uh, gearing or anything. So if you're using a different size wheel, or if you're using a different gear ratio or something, or if you have an X drive because um, you get more distance 1.41 times as far per uh, revolution, if you have any sort of alternate gearing, you're not going to get an accurate distance like you would on, um, like it, unless you have the exact specific uh, correct gear ratio. So I'm expecting that will probably get fixed not uh, before too much longer um, but that is something that you're gonna have to keep in mind that this looks all nice and pretty here but you're gonna have to uh, figure out exactly all that stuff for yourself and adapt it for yourself but this will make it a lot easier because it has all the PID loops all pre-programmed for you um, so it's it's not gonna take away all the headaches just yet out of uh, out of beginning programming but it does make it a good deal simpler because then you can just go over to code and it has generated the code then you can just open up robot C and you can uh, just literally just paste it in and use it um, a couple other little things that I've noticed just going through this being um, keyframes you can't drag them around um, or anything and you also can't insert like in between keyframes you can't insert a new keyframe so if you do forget to put in a keyframe you are going to have to um, you are going to have to delete all the keyframes after that and then do it all over again. Um, but there are some also some really cool things. For instance, 
if you want to save all your setup because you're doing multiple autonomous runs all you have to do is just hit export and then it's going to export the uh, it's going to export all of your setup and everything so that you can just import it later um, same thing with this if you want to save this uh, so you can mess around with it or change it later you can export this and it'll export it as keyframes and um, you can then import it later and yeah I find this really cool I was really excited to see it I've been I'm, I'm even more excited to get to mess around with it uh, on an actual robot and um, I'm really really impressed with this plus I really like the the, cl the clean uncluttered graphic interface so um, anyways props to this guy I won't even try to to pronounce that. <laughs> but anyways, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being awesome subscribers and viewers. We just hit 550 subscribers, so we're really excited about that. Don't forget to like and share the video with anyone else who might find this useful or interesting. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.